are you better off with a worn premium tire or a new budget tire? That's a question a lot of you have been asking and I haven't actually had an answer because it's quite a difficult thing to test. Luckily, Michelin are one of the companies that are pushing the total life performance. They believe a tire should work as well as it can all the way down to 1.6 millimeters, and they believe they develop their tires in order to do that. To find out whether this is true and whether a new budget tire is better than a worn premium tire, I have a Michelin Cross Climate 2 that's been machined down to around 2.2 millimeters and then driven on the road for 4,000 kilometers and a brand new Tomcat All Year 3. I mean, you can see the difference in tread depth. This is almost at the wear bars. And in fact, it pretty much is on the wear bars here and this is brand new full tread depth i'm not satisfied with just doing this in the dry or just doing it this wet as you might have guessed we are also doing this in the snow so this should be the ultimate test of whether this can beat this i'm skeptical michelin are confident all i know is it's going to be a really interesting test so let's start with snow handling and see whether something with this little tread depth really can dig into the snow or whether this which is quite a nice meaty chunky tread pattern will win Somehow, the near slick Cross Climate 2, the very worn Cross Climate 2, is faster around snow handling than a brand new all season tyre. And it might be a budget all season tyre, but if you've already seen my all season tyre test, if you haven't gone and watch it, it's actually a very good budget tyre in the snow. It beats some premium tyres in snow handling quite convincingly at points. The budget all season tyre did have a little bit too much understeer and it was a little bit vague like i said the levels of grip were fine they were good as the pack goes it was good and for the price point excellent so quite how this worn cross climate 2 is faster in snow with no tread very few things in tires surprise me this is one of them i thought it would be like water i thought there would be some tread depth disadvantage because of uh, like, like aquaplaning, car lifts up, maybe it would lift up on snow. Now, the first time we did this test, it was what I would call very stable, very grippy surface, where we were testing at about minus 20, it hadn't snowed for a few days, the track was nicely packed down. And after doing the test, I just felt a little bit uneasy that I would be giving you false data because it's not often, with an all season tire especially, it's not often you drive on what is a packed down snow surface regions that get those kind of surfaces are winter regions however today's a filming day luckily last night we had a lot of powder come down so instead of just filming i've snuck out and i've rerun the program again on what is a quite a nice powdery surface the track has been prepared but it's not been packed down like it was when we originally run this the cross climate is still faster i came out on the budget all season and i did a 206 a 205.9 a 205.9 my first lap on the Cross Climate 2, the worn Cross Climate 2, was a 205. And then I did a 204.8 and a 204.8. Uh, I've just done a 205 talking to you on it without really thinking about what I'm doing. The tyre just feels more positive, especially laterally. It does feel a little bit upset by the brakes. And it does feel, if I'm perfectly honest, once you get into the, the offline powder stuff, it does feel like it gets upset a little bit. But so did the other tyre. So there's no difference there maybe maybe the other tire was a little bit more positive on brakes but honestly it's so close between the two tires and you have to think the cross climate 2 will have done 40,000 miles or something in the real world to get to this point because it's a tire that's very long lasting and obviously michelin a very pro uh, total life performance I, I have an idea in my head how wet and dry are going to go but i guess we're just going to have to find out because this has been quite a strong demonstration on how premium tires can be better but not all premium tires i've also done an exercise this week on how different premium tires behaviors differ from new to worn uh, i'm not sure if it'll be out on the channel yet because we're currently filming in february and this is all going out in october but if it is go check it out if it's not subscribe it'll be coming out soon but i'm talking too much as always so let's move on to wet wet handling has shown me at least one thing I understand a little bit about physics. The worn Michelin cross climate, despite its peak, I'm gonna to get to that in a second. The worn Michelin cross climate, despite its water drop shaped grooves, which is a lovely marketing term for grooves to get wider as the tire wears, to give it better performance as it wears, it still had issues with aquaplaning. But I just want to explain how wet handling works in the world of tire testing. This track 
is flooded with an average of one millimeter water depth, like consistent water depth. One millimeter of water depth is the equivalent to a very heavy storm on the road. It's an unnatural constant state. It doesn't represent a damp track. Now, you might be thinking, oh, John, you can see you're oversteering everywhere and having quite a difficult time. You must be on the Michelin tire because it's slower than the budget Tomcat tire. However, I fitted the Tomcat specifically to demonstrate lap time isn't always the thing. This budget tire is, I can't, I, I'm not really sure what I, <laughs> like, I, I don't know how to get around this track without having a mess of oversteer. So although I could hustle it around quicker, the difference between the worn Michelin and the new budget tire, when the tire, when the Michelin was in contact with the surface, I am a thousand percent convinced it had more grip than the budget tire. The budget tire, why am I going everywhere backwards in a front wheel drive golf? It's pretty terrifying. Hold on, let me just hold this together. Oh dear. Actual spin. Huh. This isn't fun. The things I do for YouTube. Okay, after that little moment, let's get back to rounding up very quickly so I can take this tire off. The Michelin might have been a little bit slow around the lap, but I'm 100% convinced that when the tire was in contact with the surface and it wasn't aquaplaning, which you probably wouldn't be doing on a normal rainy day unless you hit a puddle, it 1000% had more grip. The budget tire, the lap time doesn't tell the story. The story is you've seen is a very, very difficult tire to drive. And you could probably argue that you would get to the whatever corner faster on the budget tire in a very heavy rainfall because you wouldn't feel the aquaplaning and then you'd be in big trouble. And of course, I have the budget tire here as well in a worn state. And I'm gonna put all the times on screen to show you exactly how slow that got. So what about the other qualities of the tires? Starting with dry grip, if you didn't already know, everything else being equal, a worn tire will perform better as it wears down, i.e. dry grip will increase with lower tread depth. The dry braking results perfectly highlighted this. The worn Michelin stopped the car in 35.2 meters, the worn budget 37 meters, the new Michelin 38.5 meters, and the new budget 43 meters. So if you didn't believe me before that dry grip to improve with wear, now you should. Dry handling had a similar but smaller improvement for the worn tires with the worn Cross Climate 2 not only being faster than the new budget tire by nearly two seconds, but also beating its own new time by half a second. Subjectively, things improved too. During the dry handling lap, the worn tires felt better on the brakes and had sharper steering precision and speed. After driving new tires all day, it almost felt like a different category of tire. This is all down to less tread depth, meaning less tread pattern movement, meaning the car steers more quickly and more directly and overall just feels more sporty. This is also often why I get questions asking why the steering feels worse when they've just upgraded their worn tires to new tires. Tread depth really makes a huge difference to steering response, especially on siped and directional tires like these. Another positive of lower tread depth is improved rolling resistance. The Cross Climate 2 already has a big advantage over the Tomcat when new, and the Worn Cross Climate 2 offers another 20% rolling resistance improvement over the new state. This is good for both your wallet and the environment, and also one of the main reasons Eco or EV tires often start with lower tread depth. Speaking of tread depth, even though the Michelin starts with around 6.5 millimeters and the Tomcat 6.6, the Michelin will offer at least 33% more tread life. Not only are less tire changes better for your wallet, it's also better for the environment. As a tire wears, microparticles are generated and generally end up in the soil and the water systems. So the more miles you get for the same amount of tread depth, the better it is for all of us. And of course, the next generation. To conclude, I feel all of this has been a pretty convincing argument that you can be better off with a worn good tire than a new budget. Obviously, I'm not suggesting you go out and buy worn tires. 
the Michelin we tested with was just about on the legal limit. So even if it is performing better, it would be illegal to use in no time at all. But it really does go to show that for the majority of situations, if you have a well-designed tire at lower tread depths, say around three millimeters, when some manufacturers recommend you change your tires, for the majority of conditions, you're likely still better off with the worn premium tire than swapping out for a new budget. So is your wallet, so is the planet. It's basically a tire win for everyone, which is my favorite kind of win. One final note, as I said at the start of the video, Michelin are generally thought of as the leaders in warm performance, but based on test results I've seen, other premium manufacturers shouldn't be too far behind in certain conditions. That said, I expect Michelin's snow advantage will be hard to get close to for any manufacturer at the moment. Basically, a good tire is usually a good tire when worn too. The final question I'm sure you're gonna ask is, when am I gonna do worn tests? If you recall what I said about the conditioning of these tires at the start of the video, they were machined down to 2.2 millimeters, then run on the road for 4,000 kilometers. That's expensive for a few sets and gets really expensive when we're doing many sets. For 10 sets, that's a lot of miles and the tires have to be run in convoy. I can't just give them to people to run. It has to be exactly the same, which means the costs are just insane but it is the only way to properly do it. Wearing them on a machine doesn't yet correlate properly with real world use, which is why I won't do it, even if other testers sometimes do. That said, I am working very closely with various people to try and work out how to do this in the future, as it is so important. Stay subscribed for updates in the future. I've said future too many times, but I, no more edits. This has taken me a few times already. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Any questions, please ask below. If you're a real tire geek, come and join me on the new tire review subreddit. It's linked in the description. I love Reddit. I'm a geek. I love tires. I'm a geek. It's a good combination. Please go review your own tires at tire reviews to comment. It really helps me and it really helps the site. And it really helps everyone that uses that site for tire information. And as always, safe motoring.